fun scale modeling. Today we're going to be talking about printed tissue, something that's sort of new to me but has been around for a while for free flight modelers. And in essence, what that means is you're taking tissue that you would use to cover a small model, putting it through your printer, and actually printing the pattern or design work onto the paper directly. You can see here in this model, I have done just that. Uh, the color, the insignia, and the panel lines, all those were done by uh, printing directly onto tissue paper or silk spad. So over the next couple of uh, chapters here, we're going to be showing you uh, what materials to use, a high level of the, the process itself, how to print, how to attach the tissue to the paper, all the things that you're going to need to do from a very high level on how to do this. As I mentioned before, this is nothing new, especially to free flight modelers, but hopefully this is something that radio control modelers will start to utilize in their tool belts. There's quite a few uh, bits of information out there on how to do this process. The best one I've seen so far was on Paul Bradley's website, and I'll include that uh, link in the information section of this video. So first thing we'll talk about are the materials and equipment used. So let's now look over at some of the tools and equipment you're going to need to be able to do the printing on the tissue. The first thing you're going to need more than anything else is a printer. I have a very inexpensive Hewitt Packard here. It's an inkjet printer. Some say you can do this on a laser printer. I've not had any experience do that, but I've had very good uh, luck with the inkjet. The other things you're going to need, um, of course, are a really good and somewhat clean cutting mat. Because the tissue can snag very easily, you don't want to have an old ragged one. If you're going to do something like this, I do recommend getting one that's pretty fresh or flip it on the backside and sometimes, which we forget about, it's probably nice and clean. Another item you're going to need is um, masking paper. You don't necessarily have to use this, but you have to have some sort of um, somewhat transparent uh, paper that you can use to trace the model. And I'll explain more on that when we get to the patterns. The first item you're going to need is a straight edge or a ruler. Um, this one is both metric and standard. I've actually removed the backing on this one so I can get a much more closer um, uh, cutting edge so it doesn't, it isn't raised up off of the surface. The other thing I recommend using is a number 11 scalpel. You can use an X-Acto, but scalpels are so much sharper and it gives a much more cleaner cut. Again, working with tissue, it can snag pretty easily, so this is a benefit if you get a nice, sharp scalpel. Some come with flat blade handles. I chose, because I'm so used to using an old X-Acto, uh, a rounded one. This here is a spray adhesive. Uh, the brand really doesn't matter. You're going to use this when you attach the tissue to your paper sheet when you put it through the printer. Um, we'll go over that technique as well, but remember, you need a, just a light coat when doing this. At some point in time, you're going to also need to seal the tissue, especially right after you print to make sure that it doesn't bleed when you do the shrinking. Uh, this uh, uh, Krylon Clear works really good for that, and we'll go over that process as well. These two items you're going to use to actually attach the tissue. This is an Elmer's glue stick. You can use Uhu or any, any brand. What I like about this one is it goes on purple but dries clear. So it also gives you kind of an indication on how much working time you've got left when, when applying the tissue. This is Easy Dope. Um, it's sort of a, a water soluble version of nitrate or butrate dope. It does sort of the same effect, but there's no fumes. So this is something that you can do in your house and not uh, have it uh, smell like nitrate or butrate for the rest of the week. And of course, uh, no tissue covering would be done without the actual tissue itself. This is lightweight silk span. Um, you can get it from a couple of different resources. I believe I got this one from Brodac. Um, this is their white. Uh, you can also get it uh, with colors. So this one's also from Brodac. This is their, their light gray. We're going to be using both of these uh, for the model that we're going to be covering. Uh, next, we'll go into uh, creating of templates from the model itself. So now we're going to show you on how to make the actual patterns that you're going to be using to put your design or your detail work on. Uh, what we're going to be using for an example today is uh, a model that I'm just currently working on. It's a 
small Japanese Nate, KI-27. Uh, looks sort of like a free flight model. It is radio control, uh, but we'll show on how we're going to pull the templates uh, directly from the actual model. Now, depending on how you design your airplane, and if something even that you did design, uh, if you're using CAD, there's different programs out there where you can take the, this panel, if you will, and flatten it out. Um, but what I found works best, and I typically draw in 2D, uh, or if you're actually building from someone else's plans, is to make a paper template and then scan that into your computer program. So I mentioned earlier that we're going to use this, this paper. Um, this is uh, masking paper. You can pick it up at any hardware store. You could probably find something different if you wanted. This is just something that I have laying around. Uh, what you're going to do then is you're going to cut yourself a section. Um, I always make a reference line on the model, and I usually do that as the thrust line or the center stringer, and everything else then gets um, drawn from that point. A section of this paper, um, what I recommend always doing is putting a reference line down it, um, and use that reference line on the center stringer or the center line of your model. And then with your cell phone or another light backing it, you're going to use a pencil and trace the shape of the curves. Uh, so you can see here, this section from, from top to bottom is, is definitely shorter than this piece here. The reason being is because it wraps around the model. So that's how you get the correct curves for your template. So here's another example of it. Here's for the main um, fuselage section. Same thing here how it wraps around the bottom, and then all the way around the top. From this point, when I've gotten all my templates created, I scan them into my computer and do a rough trace of them in the program that I use. I happen to use TurboCAD, but you can use you know, Editor, all sorts of different things. And from there, I get my initial draft of the templates, which would look like this. And I print them out and cut them out. And I hold up to the model, and I'll have to probably do a few small subtle changes, maybe extend this line, this curved line forward or aft, or whatever I feel is uh, needed to make this the most accurate as I possibly can. And then once I have these templates to where I want them, I create the actual pattern that's going to go on the model. So you can see here, this is the front cowl. Um, this lays quite nicely over this section here. And you can see that um, that matches it pretty perfect. The one thing that you're going to have to keep in mind when you do this process is when I've covered with models, whether it be from Monaco, you know, like a lightweight film, or even with tissue, you tend to use a larger sheet and larger sizes. With this, you want to be more precise. So if you're going to be covering the model in sections and in halves, you want one half of your section to start on the back of this edge here and wrap all the way around to this edge right here. What you don't want is to wrap it further than that because when you actually print on the tissue, you're going to have um, your, your details overlapping and you don't want that. One thing I have done and I found out works pretty well is if you can zoom in here, it's kind of tough to see. On this edge, right by that center line, you can see two little tick marks. There's also the same thing on this front piece right here. So if this is our center line, these little tick marks notate um, where the center stringer is. So it makes it much easier when you're ready to actually apply the tissue to line up those center tick marks on the model itself. And we'll show more about this in the actual covering of the tissue, but it's something to think about when you're, when you're creating your templates. The next thing we'll show is how do you create the templates in your CAD program. The next step in our process is to take the paper templates that we had created using the physical model and then import them into our computer program or CAD program, whatever you may be using, and make our design and templates to be printed. So if you can see here on the screen, we are, uh, have a picture of the original templates that were used for the model. These were then imported into the CAD program. I'm using TurboCAD 19. And here is the rough draft or initial drawings that we did. I later then uh, cleaned these up to make them a little bit more um, accurate. So one of the things you'll see here is, of course, the initial reference line, which we had on our drawing here. You can see that's the same reference line. I've also added some lines of reference for the vertical. And what this allows us to do is to find specifically the center point. They're all along that same center point, and it makes it much easier. 
to uh, to add your details later. So what I did was I took these these drawings here and I put them on the plans. Now this being my own design, I all I had to do was just make a copy of this from my CAD program. If you're using someone else's design, of course you'll need to uh, import this in and then superimpose these parts over it. Uh, the next step would be to find a good three view drawing and color scheme that you're going to choose. And I choose this one here. It's the one in gray. Um, and what's nice about this is that you can use it if you want for your panel line references. There's top, there's bottom here. Um, and you can also use it for your color scheme, that sort of thing. One of the reasons why I chose this particular color scheme is it's, it's pretty much a flat color gray throughout the entire uh, color scheme. On my previous airplane that you saw earlier in the video, my Focke Wolf 190, every one of those colors was printed. And uh, while not a big deal, it definitely goes through quite a bit of ink. The nice thing about this color scheme is I can use a tissue that's already gray and print my um, instrument, I'm sorry, my panel lines and my um, bird and, and unique tail section uh, details on here. It does have some white bands. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print those separately using the white or blank tissue. Um, and add gray for and aft. If you look at the top of the wing here, there's also a white band with the red circle on it and some yellow bands here on the leading edge for kind of warning the ground crew, as well as an anti-slip and that sort of thing. Uh, looking on this view here and also over here, you see that the yellow does wrap around, but it's not on the bottom here. Uh, because um, the, this discrepancy, I probably would need to look at some additional references to see what's the most accurate. However, this is a sports scale model. I'm not going to be doing any competition with it. So just for fun, I'm going to just do it on the yellow uh, on the top, just to keep it simple. Once you have this, what you can do is you can import that into your CAD program and, and trace the details. So up here you see the, the details that were on the tail. So again, there's your tail. There's your drawing and you can see the tick marks here, which are alignment marks, as well as the bird, which was traced uh, freehand in the CAD program. And then what's nice about that is you can easily mirror it for the other side. So this here, you can see that um, this is the, the front cowl panel. We've got some cowl flaps that are drawn in. We've got sort of a rudimentary uh, indication of an exhaust stack, as well as you can see this panel is specifically gonna be printed in white. From there, you can also see in this section here where um, I've superimposed the, the panel lines in the sheet over the rough drawing of the plans. This area between the two red vertical lines, that's our white section. Because it's a flat bottom wing for the most part, you can use your top plan view of your wing for your, the dimensions of the, you know, of the exterior of your sheet of paper. What you'll want to do, and especially with an airplane with a much greater camber or, or thicker wing, you'll want to start as a reference point and measure what this distance is, because this is going to be wider than the bottom, because the bottom's a straight line. So I, I take a reference point, usually it would be the initial stringer, the foremost stringer, and measure what this distance is to about right there, okay? Then on our wing, we're going to take that same distance, measure it out, and make a mark here. Do the same thing for one of our tip uh, ribs there. Draw your line and then that gives you the exterior point um, of the forward part of your paper or your, your tissue. You do the same thing from this point to this point and measure that out here, measure that out there and draw your line. And that gives you the full size sheet. Again, adding tick lines, what I've chosen to do for simplicity is just put the ticks on where the stringers are. You take that, you do that for each one of your sections and it does sound a bit uh, like a lot of work, but once you get into it, it's really not that bad. It goes pretty quickly. The nice thing about using a computer program, of course, is you can mirror images. So again, I only had to draw one side of the fuselage, the vertical, everything, and then draw a reference line and just simply mirror it over. Um, it, it's just that simple. Here we have our fully printed and ready to go parts. The next step that I'd like to do is to pull these into a separate file and break them out into the printable sheets. So these square diameters, um, those are eight and a half by 14 or legal size sheets. And that lets me know exactly what I can fit onto it. 
These reference lines that you see um, towards the top and towards the bottom, those are specific for my printer. My printer has, even in the borderless uh, setting, quite a bit of area that isn't printed. Um, yours may, will more than likely be different than what mine is. So I do recommend that you run a test sheet just to sort of see where your borders are, and then you can make sure that everything that you're planning on printing will show up within that section. This one sheet here is the plain or the white tissue that we're gonna be printing on. The rest are gonna be printed here on gray. So that takes us to the end of our, of our overview on how to add the panel lines and to create the details. The next thing will, uh, will be where we actually are printing onto the tissue. So now let's go over how to apply the tissue to your template um, piece of paper. So one thing I recommend that you do is as you get to know this process and get to know your printer is to create yourself a little template sheet. Um, this was mine here. I identified that when I print it, it actually comes through upside down. So that's one other thing you have to take in consideration on how your printer does things. And what I also recommend that you do is just to make yourself up just some sort of scrap uh, frame here to do the tissue printing. Um, this is a great thing you can do to try different colors and how they might bleed, that sort of thing. And it's also really useful to see what, you know, how much you want to spray on for your seal coat. So what I have here is just a, a, just a piece of cardboard to help cover the spray. We've got here our blank sheet of paper. This is what we're going to attach the tissue to. We have here our um, spray adhesive, and I want to show you just on how little you need to put on. So you can go ahead here and kind of see. And that's all you really need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the cardboard here. And this is the tissue that I've chosen. This is, I mentioned earlier, um, a light gray. This is from Brodac. It comes in uh, basically almost like two, 20 by 30 sheets. You get three of them for less than $5. So it's a really good deal. I um, just sort of gently set this over. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not, you're not, you know, you're not, you're not set to a certain thing. And you see here, now I'm just gonna carefully smooth it out. So if I need to, I can sort of tease it a little bit. All you're really wanting is the tissue to stick. You don't want it to be permanent. There. Now I've got a little bit of overhang here. That's not that big a deal. Um, I'm going to trim it along that line and I've got an example here. You can see here's the sheet. There it is. I also leave myself just a little bit of extra overhang. It makes it easier to, to peel the tissue off. So let's go ahead and we'll print a panel. So if you look up on the, on the screen there, you can see I've got my panel all prepared right here. Uh, my my uh, printer is set to borderless. It's set to um, either the best or um, the second best printing availability. And here's how you just put it in your printer. So I've set it with that little extra tab on the top. Nothing too fancy, we'll let it load. And we'll go ahead and let it print. And there you go, this is the printed sheet. Now what we'll do is we'll let the ink dry for about five to 10 minutes before we do the seal spray. Uh, I've prepared a panel previously. It's been sitting for about, about uh, 10, 15 minutes now. And we'll go ahead and we'll put our, our, our seal coat on and this is just to stop the ink from bleeding. So again, you can see here, I'm not gonna put a lot on. And that's about all you need to seal the ink. You're gonna let that dry for about 10 to 15 minutes as well, and then it'll be ready to, uh, to handle. So the next thing we'll be going over is the actual uh, trimming of these panels and applying them to the airframe. 
All right, so we finally got to the point where we're gonna start adding tissue to airframe. Uh, first things first, I'm gonna go over a couple of different tools and things you'll be needing to, uh, to complete the process. The first is a, a, a good straight edge or ruler. Uh, an X-Acto or a, a brand new sharp scalpel is also very important, especially working with the, the tissue, you don't want it to snag. Uh, you may need a, a pencil. I have this is actually it's a light. Uh, I'll be using it in just a few minutes here to help um, see through the, the, the structure and, and the tissue when I'm applying it. Uh, an assortment of scissors. So this one seems kind of ridiculously big, but it works really well for larger sheets when cutting that. I think I got that at Harbor Freight. Uh, a medium uh, scissors, nothing too unusual about that. Smaller one here for getting into tight spaces and all the way even down to a um, mustache trimmer. So this is something you can pick up just about any particular store. Uh, paintbrush, I like these flat wide ones. I'm sure there's a specific name for it or a number. Uh, looks like this is a six or a nine, depending on which way you look at it. Um, a small cup, I think this is from a takeout. The glue stick, so this is the primary thing we're going to be using to attach the tissue to the frame. This is the kind that uh, when it's uh, still wet, it's purple, but it does dry clear. The easy dope, this we're gonna use to seal the perimeter of, of the tissue, uh, and we'll be diluting that with um, water. So I've just got a, a basically distilled or uh, bottled water here. I don't like to use tap just because of the minerals that are in it. And then later on, we'll also be um, using that same kind of water to help shrink the tissue. Should we have any wrinkles in it, we wanna get it nice and tight. The item we're gonna start with is the horizontal. Uh, you can see here, I'm going to do something a little bit different is I'm gonna cover it as one solid piece. Normally, you would take the elevator off and you cover the horizontal and the elevator half separate, but because it's so thin, we can get away with covering it in one sheet. And that's how we printed it here. So this is our printed sheet. I still have the backing on it. I'm going to pull that off right now and show you guys how that all works. So I've got it pre-started here. You can see that it's kind of peeled up. And you kind of want to gently pull it back across itself. There's your tissue, of course, the back side. Now, if it does curl up like this, you can just gently roll it over the edge and that'll help take some of that out. So if you're going to cover it like this in one solid piece, you wanna make sure that you have yourself a good gap, probably even a little bigger than what you would normally do on, on your hinge line. And then the next thing we're gonna do is to apply the Elmer's glue. So what I do is for this, we're just going to cover the perimeter, and that's what we're wanting to do. So, so I do the, the front edge and then just a little bit of the top edge. And you want to give it maybe two, two good liberal coats. Next is I'm going to turn on my light so I've got a nice little source of light underneath it. And you always want to kind of keep your hands clean as much as possible or if they get a little damp because you're getting nervous make sure that you wipe them off and in this case what i'm doing is i'm lining up my elevator lines a little bit off on this side here so you can see how the light shines through and i gotta pull it over just a little bit So can you see how that lines up with the line? So now, go ahead and work out some of those wrinkles. And the, the Elmer's glue allows you to make some corrections or adjustments. As much as you can, you want to get all the wrinkles out. It won't be perfect, 
Again, I'm starting with the underside here, so any imperfections will be helping to be hidden by that. And just kind of work your thumb or finger around the corners because you put some on that leading edge there. And again, like I said, you've got some working time. And we've designed it so that you don't really have to do much trimming. Uh, what you will have to do is you're going to have to cut, uh, I'll go ahead and try this off, you're going to have to cut to get around these curved surfaces. So that's where your small scissors come in real and handy. So I'm going to trim that. All right, so now we've gone all the way around. So I'm going to do it once more on sort of the leading edge here. So you can kind of see how I'm getting also the tissue backside. And then we're just going to roll it over. I've got probably more overhang than I would really need, but that's all right. If you get a little bit that sticks up, that's all right. We'll, we'll get it with the easy dope as well. So there is our current bottom half covered. Next thing I'm going to do here is mix up some of the easy dope. So you can see here, I'm not putting a lot in. It's, it's pretty, pretty uh, wet as it is. I'm also gonna add just a couple of drops of water there. it up. Alright, so then use the easy dope to seal that in. So the other thing you guys can see by a mistake that I made is I didn't trim enough to to remove the the diameter uh, line or the outside perimeter line, so that's going to show up a little bit. It's just another panel line for this uh, this model in this case. So now that we've done that, what I'm going to do see this is kind of a nice sharp. bristle paintbrush and so I'm going to go in there and then later once this is dry we're going to cut that free and then use a little bit of unthinned easy dope to to lay it down So we'll set this aside and come back to it in just a few minutes um, and we'll also show you how to cover part of the fuselage. This is the rear of the fuselage. So you've got my fuselage here, we're um, all set to go, I've given it a light sanding, it's all prepared. Um, very similar to what we just did on the horizontal but with a few subtle changes because it's a different kind of structure. One thing you're going to want to make sure that you do is you're going to want to, because we're covering this whole section that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get glue on the, the entire outside, including the wraparound. We've got a cutout here for the horizontal, so we wanna make sure that we coat that area as well. And then up here, this is where the push rod exits. We're gonna to wanna to make sure we cover that with uh, the Elmer's glue as well. So if you can see here, we have our tick marks. So this is our center line, of course, and there happens to be a panel line, which that worked out very well. But these two little ticks right there and those two right there, that is the indicator of our center stringer, which is this one right here. So we'll go ahead and we'll get this off. Oh, and the other little tip that I always do is make sure if you're going to cut them out ahead of time, mark them because sometimes all panels uh, can look the same and you don't want to add the wrong piece in the wrong spot. So. Back across itself, that light coat of 
sticky glue really comes off nicely. Section here, again, make sure we're covering that. And if you get a little bit on the other stringers, it's okay. You don't want to necessarily cover every single stringer because that allows, uh, during the shrinking process, some more um, flexibility. And then on the bottom here, we make sure we get that a good, good coat. And I'm adding it to this stringer right here because there's a section where uh, I need to cut it out at a later point in time. And then you just kind of, I like to dab it in this section. We're going to So we want to make sure that we sort of massage it into place, pulling it taut while we do. Again, whatever we can try and take out so far as needing to shrink ahead of time, we definitely want to do that. That's a, that's a big advantage. Because again, when we when we pre-treated this to help seal it, it's going to take some of the elasticity out of the tissue, and it won't shrink as much. So that's why we want to try and get as much as we can now. And it's just it's it's just working the the tissue. Um, I'm going to cut here, and that's going to allow for a little bit more. And we'll we'll sand this all nice and 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 uh, smooth later. So we just want to make sure we've got a good seal. Again, that's where our exit point is. And then we want to make sure where our horizontal gets cut up. And you got a little glue there. But you can see I'm I'm pushing on this pretty uh, pretty hardly, and it's not it's not um, smearing. So that's a good thing. That means we've got enough of the coat on to seal. So I'm going to do. A little bit more in of the easy dope perimeters. I'll come here. horizontal area and just like with an iron-on film you have to attach it to some to the structure underneath otherwise it'll just sort of shrink up and and uh, not be what you want so that's about it for this panel here we're gonna let this dry and then once that's fully dry I will um, show you on how to shrink this up uh, using just basically a hair dryer and water. So we've gotten to the stage where we've pretty much completed covering of our model. You can see here on the fuselage, all the panels have been added. Uh, and we've also covered the tail section. We're going to use the tail section to kind of show how we shrink up the tissue. Really nothing unusual about that. Um, the one thing that I recommend that you do, and again this is just straight uh, pure water or purified water, is if you can hold the, the, the part up, up and spray up at it. 
The reason being is the heavier particles of water will actually fall down where the lighter mist will hit the surface. And you want that to help reduce any sort of spotting or over soaking the tissue. If you do need to lay it down, let's say for a flat surface like this, or if you're putting, uh, if you're shrinking washout into the wing, um, what I recommend you do is take a step back and just lightly spray over it and let the mist fall onto it. The heavier particles of water will fall before you um, get to the surface, which is what you prefer to do. We're waiting for our tissue to dry. I'm going to show the last sequence uh, of the, the overall process, and that's to seal the tissue um, completely with um, your Krylon. So what I'm going to do is show you on the fuselage here. Uh, again, I'm going to sort of spray up at it in light coats. So we don't want to coat it on heavy, especially for the very beginning. So you can see I'm just sort of pulling it back. doesn't take much. Ryan will give it maybe another two or three more coats. Each coat that you give you can go a little bit heavier in its coverage to help seal that tissue. And that's the basic process. I hope you guys try it out. It's actually a lot of fun. You can get a, a great amount of detail on your model. It adds very little weight. It's even lighter than uh, film from what I found. It's a little bit different than covering in film but definitely is worth it in the end. Thanks for watching.